right welcome back to the channel everyone good morning good morning good morning hope you guys are having a great rest of your day start your day whatever time it may be damn this car is looking good right now it's the first of the month so that means you're gonna be crashing a supercar meet we're going to post houston aka the ferrari lambo porsche mclaren paradise and uh we're gonna get some reactions so if you guys enjoyed the video y'all know what to do man drop a like on the vid subscribe to the channel turn on those post notifications do all that good stuff i'm actually throwing my keys around like crazy get a little startup man where the car started to begin overheating 
I wasn't paying attention to my temp gauge and also I did not have the SCT4 device plugged in. The car is currently on a base tune because I'm breaking in a clutch. So I really didn't think I would need to have it plugged in because obviously I'm not running the car hard. I'm not doing any type of pulls. I'm not racing it. Nothing like that. So in all reality, I didn't really need to have it plugged in. Now it's plugged in 24 seven. I wasn't paying attention because I was kind of getting footage for the channel. But uh, yeah, this is kind of where things start to get hot, literally. So I drove to a car wash. So far, the temps are good. 
Um, car's driving fine, it did not overheat. Uh, gonna go ahead and spray this car off and get as much of the paint off the car as possible. It's like paint flakes. I don't know how the hell this happened um, because on the highway, the glare, it didn't look like it was paint, but obviously after getting out the car, it 100% is paint. I don't know how that happens. I wish I got the actual plate of the truck because I'm half tempted to call the city of Houston because this is like ridiculous. And I know this has probably happened to a shit load of cars on the highway I was on. So, oh man, this is why I don't like coming to Houston legitimately because like it's the roads are, it don't make any sense. Like if you're not on the, the freeway, the toll road freeway, well, freeway, it's terrible. Like you guys know, it's just random shit be happening. <laughs> Ridiculous, I have to do this. <laughs> I just got the car washed too. Ain't that a bit. TR1245 
a thousand horsepower rated intercooler um, it should be a direct bolt-in because it does have a, uh, a CX racing this car has a CX racing intercooler on it right now I'm not 100% sure what type of uh, radiators on here but I am just gonna go ahead and get a, a beefier upgraded radiator just in case this car doesn't have it I think it honestly does have a pretty decent radiator it looks pretty beefy um, from when I looked at it and obviously from what you guys saw but I mean so far so good I gotta do the clutch cable too I mean so far so good it's just you know two extra things added onto the list um, hopefully I can get everything done all at the same time I think I should be able to swing it um, if not you know obviously unfortunately uh, we might have to push uh, uh, the dyno tune back you know two weeks three weeks uh, something like that because uh, number one you know those intercoolers and radiators they're not cheap that's like the one thing you don't want to cheap out on is cooling and on top of that you know rear end gears and a clutch cable that could be done in you know one day at a shop doing rear end gears clutch radiator and intercooler I mean that's a couple days I think maybe two three days or something like that so I'll keep you guys updated but uh, if you guys have any recommendations on radiators uh, please let me know down in the comment section I am gonna go ahead and replace uh, the coolant reservoir as well because it is like a ghetto setup so I'm just gonna get one of those like uh, Moroso you know nice ones uh, not the ghetto setup I got on it right now uh, Obviously, I wasn't the one that did that, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace that. But again, let me know what radiators y'all recommend, man. Because I'm just going to try to play it safe right now. Because um, I know for a fact, uh, because of what just happened, it is paint. It's not like, you know, just spraying paint. It's like paint flakes on the car. That I was able to actually get off, but I'm definitely gonna have my boy um, Ceramic Solutions come touch this up, like literally, like hopefully within the next like day or two, just so I can get all this off the car because I only had <laughs> fucking, I only had one rag to work with. <laughs> I was not expecting this to happen today. Luckily. I keep cooling on deck because if I didn't have cooling on deck, I would have been fucked. I would have had to get the car towed, which would have been irritating. Which I do have AAA, but I kind of want to save that tow for when it goes to the shop. <laughs> or I should say, you know, when it goes to the uh, when it goes from the shop to the tuners, um, when I do upgrade, you know, the head unit and whatnot obviously I'm not gonna drive it but so far um, everything is looking good I'm gonna pull up to my uh, normal spot so I can pull over and kind of give you guys a walk around the car it's dirty again unfortunately it's dirty again it was literally fucking spotless not even 24 hours ago and now I gotta get it detailed again but I got most of it off to the best of my ability the rear trunk's kind of bad um that might be chalked honestly but again thank god it happened in this car not the shelby because i would be unbelievably furious i would have been calling the city for sure all right y'all so i'm back on my side of town now the car is dirty again but it's not terrible I was about 30 minutes away when this happened, so I literally went to the nearest car wash I could find. I only had one rag that was given to me and uh, pretty much did the best I could to mitigate any type of like paint damage that would happen with obviously, you know, it being on the car and it being 100 degrees out here. I uh, definitely want to go ahead and get as much of it off as possible. Um, I sprayed the intercooler. Um, I tried to get back there where the radiator was to get as much of like that paint flake whatever it was on uh, The car just really really annoying situation. Um, you guys can see uh, Down here, you know, it's dirty still. I mean that's just from driving 
inside the wheel well it's you know paint part of it's still coming off uh, because obviously sprayed it but you guys can see down in there uh, there definitely is some like paint down there and um, actually you can kind of see right here I think okay maybe not but uh there's some paint still in there this whole situation is like really just weird don't know how that really happened uh, luckily um, the fuel filter didn't get clogged up I know it's kind of crazy to think that would happen but that's kind of what I was you know grateful for because I'd be back to square one when I first got the car so hopefully um, uh, we're good to go I'm gonna continue to monitor the car make sure everything is good uh, somehow you know luckily man you know knock on the shit in this car you know whatever <laughs> that the blower you know didn't get paint on it man that would have been something else for real so i don't have a blower guard on here yet so that would have been interesting Whew. what a morning i didn't even get to enjoy the car meet man i had a completely different video in mind for today but it is what it is i'm super happy that i was not in the shelby when this did go down because not only would i have completely ruined the paint because of it being a yellow car and the different paint grades that they use on the s550s i would have destroyed the carbon fiber hood as well as the radiator and i don't want to know what would have happened if that car overheated obviously because it is a newer car all the newer electronics i'm pretty sure there would have been some type of alert again i don't ever want to find that out but i'm just happy it didn't happen in that car obviously i did not want this to happen in this car but i was already planning on respraying the paint it's not in the best condition so you know it kind of is one of those it is what it is situations now as you guys saw uh from the vid it was coming out of the coolant reservoir it wasn't coming from the motor it wasn't coming from the exhaust cause that's originally what i thought was going down it came from the reservoir which i'm assuming that the paint flakes whatever caked up the intercooler caked up the radiator and it was preventing flow so obviously all the pressure came out so man Luckily, I turned it off like as soon as it happened. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, the fellas that did recognize me at the meet. I know I was a little bit out of it today. Obviously, I was focusing on the car. Uh, you guys probably had no idea what was going on. I was just sitting in the car with the hood pop. So I do apologize, but uh, thank you guys for saying what's up. You guys know how I am. Um, for those of you who met me in person, I'm like a really, really chill guy. So. I hope I didn't, you know, rub you the wrong way. That's what she said. <laughs> but also, I want to give a huge shout out to the two fellas. Let me know what was going on because I wasn't like fully paying attention because I was obviously recording a video um, and I wasn't looking directly at my temperature gauges when, you know, it blew coolant out the uh, the reservoir. But the fellas that let me know what went down. Um, I was able to turn the car off literally a second or two after it happened and uh thank you guys so much man that's that's what the car community is about man having each other's backs so if you guys enjoyed the video uh damn it i hate making these vids i really do <laughs> make sure you guys drop a like on the vid subscribe to the channel turn those post notifications i'm gonna monitor the car for the next couple of days and obviously go ahead and replace the parts that 100 need to be replaced uh, the radiator as well as the intercooler all right, so I did go ahead and actually drive the car about 25 minutes home in stop and go traffic. That was the route I had to take to get back to my place. And I did actually plug in the SCT device to monitor the coolant temp as well as the IATs so I can determine if the radiator as well as the intercooler were compromised. Now, mind you, it's 100 plus degrees outside here in Houston, stop and go traffic for about 25 minutes my coolant temp was about 208 to 12. now that is high for me i don't believe my white car ever got that hot and that was with the stock radio there as on the car right now the radio that's on this car definitely is a little bit of an upgraded unit but because of the paint incident i am going to have to replace the radiator 
the fan, the thermostat, as well as the electrical connections for all that stuff. Now, when I did go ahead and pull the car into my apartment complex and park it into the garage, um, obviously stop and go traffic, more cars, more heat, and in that little smaller garage, um, my coolant temps uh, did rise up to actually 236 and I immediately shut off the car. That is way too hot. Um, I know some people might say it's not that hot, but I mean 236, is that's too hot. Like if I was doing pulls at 236, that's going to be a bad, bad situation. Now I waited about 25, 30 minutes, uh, went back to the car. Uh, I pulled off the radiator cap and I did not see any like milkiness. I pulled the dick stick, uh, did not see any milkiness, which is a good thing. So I'm going to uh, replace all the coolant components as well as the cap itself. I know those can cause issues as well. And I'm essentially just gonna go ahead and get a professional coolant flush. Now the IATs, on the other hand, um, they actually weren't as bad. Again, it's 100 degrees out here, and my IATs are like 104, and that was with the uh, CX Racing unit. Now, with the Treadstone unit, because I had that on the white car, it would mirror the IATs. Now, I have not gotten on the car and raced the car yet, so I really can't determine if the intercooler is compromised because it could get hotter because, you know, obviously running the engine harder. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade both of those at the same time just to prevent, you know, me having to come right back to the shop because, you know, the IATs are getting way too hot. It's just something that is kind of annoying. Again, I'm very, very happy this did not happen in the Shelby because, I mean, just to replace the radiator on the Shelby is more than like all this shit, obviously not the intercooler, but to replace the coolant system on like a two valve car literally is like less than what a stock Shelby, you know, radiator is. So luckily that did not happen to Shelby. Um, the paint would have been ruined on that car. I, I, would have, I literally would have cried. Like that would have been terrible. I would have been calling, you know, 311 to get, you know, some type of compensation because there's no way that that should have been happening on the left-hand lane in the freeway uh, with, you know, paint coming out of a truck. That's outrageous. It just, it, that shouldn't be happening. But, uh, yeah, I want to keep you guys up to date. I'm going to continue to monitor everything. Definitely not going to take the car out when, when it's hot outside. I am going to actually go ahead and, and test to see what's going on with the car. You know, obviously during, you know, cooler weather at night to see what the temps are. If it's still getting hot, then obviously, um, you know, I'm going to have to just wait until I replace all of the coolant. Um, situation here and at the same time you know i'm just going to go ahead and you know do the rear end gears and you know hopefully the car will be ready to go to race but right now um i wanted to get the car ready to go uh for next month but obviously this takes supreme priority because this is literally just the cooling system that's that's very very important especially living here in texas so i'm going to get this knocked out and uh keep you guys up to date man it's just you know it is what it is shit happens and uh luckily you know there was no, you know, exhaust, you know, smoke or anything like that. So, uh, there's...